Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with If I Could Choose Only One Work by Composer X, it would have to be Work C. Well, Composer X is the American composer Roy Harris, and we all know what Work C has to be. C is the third letter of the alphabet, and Roy Harris's Third Symphony is the only work by him at this point that anyone cares about. This begs the musical question, was Roy Harris a one-shot wonder? I think the answer is no, uh, but he's known as a composer at all. I mean, he wrote some piano music, he wrote some marvelous chamber music, um, but essentially he's known as a symphonist because of this one symphony. But there are nine symphonies, at least 10, I don't know, there's a bunch of them, and most of them have been recorded. Not all of them are still available. That's kind of a problem. There are some late works that are really rather cool, like the 11th Symphony. Oh, so he did more than nine. So I'm talking about the 11th. I don't know. Uh, you know, and some other things like that. Um, nobody has quite taken the time and trouble to, to wrap their brain around his complete oeuvre or his style as a composer. He was kind of like, you know, well, it's a weird comparison, I suppose, but I might as well go for it. The American Bruckner if you can imagine such a thing, that his music sort of sort of happens in chunks and it's sort of clunky and awkward, but also very sincere and very heartfelt. And, uh, you know, he's, he's, he also has, there's a little bit of the Dvorak mythos around him too, because he was like a truck driver and he did all this. I mean, Philip Glass was a taxi cab driver in New York City. So, I, you know, some great composers have been drivers. It's not the point, but he, he had a, 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 just shall we say, rural or working class origin, as like Dvorak was a peasant. And so his music is supposed to not be intellectual or not sophisticated. I, I don't know if any of that's true, because if you look at the great composers, most of them had lower class backgrounds. Most of them had, I mean, the, the greatest composers had minimal, what we would call normative educations. They were not, they were not sort of, you know, uh, sophisticates, shall we say. Um, some of them were, but very few. And so when the music they wrote was extraordinary. So I'm not sure whether Harris's biography is relevant in evaluating his music. Some of it seems to be kind of, you know, hopeless. <laughs> and some of it seems very, very intriguing. I mean, you know, the Gettysburg Symphony, which is number six, is a very, very attractive piece. The Fifth Symphony that came just before that is a lovely work. Number four is the American Folk Song Symphony, I think, like that. It's based on other tunes and it's charming. You know, he's he was not... He was not a one-shot wonder, let's put it that way. That doesn't mean he's ever going to be performed or listened to. And that is why I emphasize, if we're going to pick one work and we pick the Third Symphony, we give it to the evil god Cancrasans, who wants to destroy all of classical music, but for one work per composer, which is why we have to pick one work per composer, we say to him, listen, this guy was not a one-shot wonder. There's a lot of other stuff, but it's all ignored. No one has a chance to listen to it. And I will say to Cancrasans, you want to destroy classical music because of the idiocy of the classical music military industrial complex and the lunacy, 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 lunaticness, I don't know, of the, of the record labels and the industry and all of that stuff and the obnoxiousness and snobbery of listeners and all of those qualities. Well, why would you penalize Roy Harris because of their foolishness? I, people who care and love about music deserve a chance to discover and savor all of the other things that he wrote. And this is just a case in point. So you can't do that, Ken Grisans. He's wavering, by the way. I can tell. I can tell. He's, he's, he's eating a lot of junk food, and that, that's usually an indication of guilt. So he never admits that he's wrong, of course, but, you know, one more bag of Cheetos and I'll sort of, I think, have them where I want them. Anyway, the Third Symphony is an acknowledged masterpiece. It's a one movement work inspired, as so many other American works of the period were, by the last symphony of Sibelius. Um, it combines different things, different movement types into one unbroken format. It's actually, it actually has its own form and that form is pretty splendid. 
you know, there's this threnody, a sort of opening, and then there's a pastoral episode, and then a fugue, and then a coda, an epilogue, and it ends rather tragically. It ends in a very stern way. It's an extraordinary piece. It's less than 20 minutes long normally. Actually, even there, you know, it was often performed with small cuts. Um, and, you know, only recently has the whole thing <laughs> been performed normally. Not that the cuts were bad necessarily, but you know what I mean. It's good to hear the whole piece. It's not so long that that we can afford to miss out on any of it. And it doesn't sound like anybody else. And it's somebody who could write a work such as that and do it so effectively and masterfully must have been able to write other things that are that are worth hearing. And Harris did. And we deserve to hear them. So, so that's the point. Listen to the Harris Third. You know, it used to be ubiquitous. It was a very popular symphony in the 40s and 50s and 60s. It was the American symphony. And now it's just vanished. I can't think of the last time anyone's actually played the thing. I, I don't understand why not. It's marvelous. And why the rest of his music is ignored, like all American music is ignored. It's just terrible, isn't it? So keep on listening, friends. Give the Harris Third a shot. If you haven't heard it in a while, you're going to be very pleasantly surprised by what a tremendous piece it is. Take care. <laughs>